So guys, today I'm going to be talking about my top 7 favorite bushcraft tool. Well, as I mentioned in a little intro here, uh, today I'm going to be talking about my favorite tools. And I have around 7 of them. And when I mean my favorite tools or uh, items for bushcraft, I'm not always talking about, or these are not going to be the most economical or the most practical. These really are tools that make me love bushcraft. They, these are the tools that make me want to get outside more often and honestly want to make me go out into the woods just so that I can actually use these tools. I mean, don't get me wrong, bushcraft is really fun, but these are the tools that push it over the edge and make it extraordinarily fun. These are the ones that really motivate me to get out there even more so. Without any further ado, let's get into the first one. So this right here, if any of you long-term subscribers are pretty familiar with this one probably, this is the Ben Pearson 709 Hunter. This is a trad bow, this is a traditional recurve. And while I don't honestly use this bow that much, because honestly it's really hard to incorporate a bow plus a quiver full of arrows out into a woods typed gear setup, uh, I still really enjoy using this bow. It's super fun. And this is why one of my favorite bushcraft bows because this is the lightest poundage traditional bow I have and it's very quick shooting. Uh, this is really a great bow for smaller game animals, things like hare, uh, coyote, anything that's smaller, not quite squirrel. This is probably still a little overpowered for that because this is a 45 pound bow, but it's 45 pounds at 28 inches and this is an overall length of 58 inches so it's probably about a medium sized bow it's definitely not a shorty but it's definitely not as large as some of my other traditional this is bows. definitely though on the favorite list just for the fact that it is extremely fun tool to use for hunting i would highly encourage anyone uh, to look into bows. They're a very fun method of hunting and I really so do So now it. into the second tool. This is the GBA Scandi Forest Axe and this is a loved axe by many including Wrangler Star. This is one of his top axes and I can really, having owned one now for a couple of years, I can see why uh, Wrangler loves this axe. I really love this axe. It is overall one of the best bushcrafting axes in my opinion. Uh, I know Holtifers and many others have come out with really cool axes that are certainly cheaper than this one, but for me this GBA just does it. The ergonomics, the grind, the way this axe is put together, it just overall is great. And I have taken this axe on so many outings, you guys can just see kind of how dirty this axe is. Uh, you know, it may not look terribly dirty on camera, but trust me, if you have a brand new one of these, you'll know that this thing actually looks really dirty. As well, this sheet or this uh, lanyard here, it just looks so, so filthy. This was a extremely bright neon orange before when I first started uh, this out. So, this thing has seen tons of use, uh, been in soaking rain, you know, this thing has been absolutely drenched in water. And overall, it is just an awesome axe. I've really enjoyed this axe so much. Uh, you can actually see, unfortunately, one of the rivets, one of the half part, like this part, still in there. But this one actually, this uh, half of this rivet fell out, which is a little bit unfortunate, but still awesome. And the sheets still work. Uh, the edge retention has been amazing on it. But once again, this is an axe that's been a lot of fun for me. It's not only been a lot of fun for me because it's a really good axe, but this was... For bushcrafting, this was the axe that I dreamed of. Like, this was my dream axe to get. And I knew, you know, even when I got the Wetterlings, I still knew that I really wanted the GBA because the GBA, there's just something about the way this one looks and the way this one performs that just absolutely makes it awesome. So I knew that I really had to get this axe. It took me a little while to get it, but I did eventually get it. And I've been extremely happy with it. In fact, um, if you watch some of the axe comparison videos between the Wetterlings versus this GBA, I mentioned many times, very truthfully, that ever since I got the GBA, my Wetterlings has only been on two outings, and both of those times were with the GBA. So since I've got this GBA, I really have not been using the Wetterlings or really any other axe for outings. 
So anyways, this one has been a, a ton of fun. And once again, it really makes my uh, journeys out into the woods a lot more. Now on to a knife. Now with knives in me, it can be a little bit hard to narrow it down. But as I mentioned in a previous video, this knife has been with me for many years or at least around three years now and when I got this knife I really wanted to you know try and break it to see if I could actually break it because I really wanted to test Bark River Knives durability with this knife and it really impressed me and not only that but the whole overall design of this knife and its sheath are extremely impressive the edge retention is you know amazing with cpm 3b and i've said it many times you know in its review and other places that this knife is awesome this was kind of inadvertently a dream knife of mine i really actually wanted the aurora but uh, i actually got an aurora and broke the aurora so i switched over to the bush crafter and i really have not looked back ever since and honestly with this knife uh, you know, I've really come to love it and really trust it. Like, if I had to choose a knife to go on alone, this would definitely be it. In fact, this would be the exact setup I would have. Rocking this awesome Light My Fire uh, Army 2.0. Uh, so it not only looks great, or this fair rod not only looks great and matches the leather really well, this knife is an extremely capable knife. And once again, going back to that kind of mindset of bringing out tools that really are a pleasure to use and really make you want to go bushcrafting that really does this knife really does that for me because i know how capable it is and i know exactly how to use this knife to pretty much achieve anything i want on to the next tool now this is the leatherman surge i don't talk about this tool too much but this is really one of my uh, most favorite bushcraft tools just for the fact that instantly actually my friend was the one who uh, inspired me to get this one because he was letting me use his one day when i was bushcrafting and instantly when i held this knife i just not knife but multi-tool i instantly knew i needed one um, just for a few reasons the biggest reason and i talked about this in the review of it uh is so many things or so many uh multi-tools they have saws but my biggest gripe with saws especially if you use them like i do like to use my multi-tool saws quite a bit uh, my biggest gripe was that on multi-tool saws if it's not re easily replaceable which most of them aren't this is the only one that i know of that's easily replaceable uh, essentially you know once you wear this saw out you're pretty much without that tool so that's one entire tool that you're without but what really attracted me to the surge was the fact that you know it's super easy and all you have to do is that hopefully you saw that and you know you can just pop this saw right out and i love how easy it is to not only replace but change out the uh, saw blades and that was one of the biggest selling factors for me in addition what i like is that in this spot you can also you know put files or you could potentially make your own custom tool for that if you really wanted to but what i liked about the file that you get with this uh, tool the file is a diamond sharpener and what i thought was a little bit goofy with other uh, multi-tools is that if the file is permanently attached to the multi-tool you know you can sharpen other blades around you but you can't even sharpen your own blade on here so the nice thing about that diamond file if you have that in this space and you need to sharpen one of these two blades on here you can actually just pop it out and you can actually sharpen this and so i really love that about it as well i just love the amount of tools and amount of options you can put with the surge the surge is one of the most versatile tools in the leatherman lineup because you can get the bit kit to have a whole bunch of different bits and once again you have the interchangeability of the saw plus the file in that area that i showed you have a whole bunch of tools you also have really heavy duty scissors on this tool and overall i could continue to do yet another review on this tool it's just so versatile and it's so great for the outdoors so honestly if you're looking for an awesome tool these are a little pricey in all fairness but they're not super expensive especially versatility being considered 
they are really one of the best uh, outdoor multi-tools you can get. All that versatility and all of that <laughs> exchanging of saw blades is what ultimately led me to wanting to get the Surge. And that's why the Surge is one of my favorite bushcraft tools. And uh, really, it is a pleasure to use. It may not, you may not think about it much, but it is a really awesome tool. So this next tool goes back to that quintessential proverbial saying of you don't know how much you really love something until it's gone. And that is my exotac. And this last summer, I in around July, uh, to get out to my bushcrafting place, I have to run across a really busy road. And one day I was coming back from bushcrafting. It was a really hot summer day, so I had taken my BDU off. And uh, I accidentally forgot that this was in one of those pockets. And while running across the street, um, this, the BDU uh, fell off my backpack because I didn't really secure it that well. And in all the midst of stuff, I just grabbed my BDU and ran. Uh, but what I didn't realize is I had actually dropped the Exotac. And I realized that a couple days after, and I went back to go look for the Exotac, uh, but I could not find it anywhere. Uh, so that really sucked, and it was actually at that point that I really missed this little Exotac. I really love this thing, and you guys see this uh, little ferro rod in quite a few videos, especially the ferro rod itself. But uh, this ferro rod as a whole entire unit is very awesome. I really love it. This is easily my favorite ferro rod system and uh, it strikes well. What I love most about it is if you guys are noticing a continuing trend, I love with things that wear out uh, over time, I love the ability to change them. And I've gone through a few ferro rods with this ferro rod system already and I've really enjoyed that whole fact of the cost savings and the ease at which you can just pop these ferro rods out. You know, you can carry multiple of these ferro rods and just pop them out as they go bad. Same with the strikers as well. But anyways, I did end up finding this about three months after I lost it. I was walking back with my friend and I saw it on the side of the road close to where I thought I had lost it and it was all covered in the dirt and it actually got ran over a few times. Uh, I'm not sure how much justice this ferro rod or this camera can do uh, to showing uh, some of these ran over spots, but especially like right here. Uh, it definitely took a lot of dings and it has some good war damage on it. But overall, the entire thing is still intact and still works just fine. But I was super excited to find this thing. And really, that actually made my day for that day. I was just so excited that I found this ferro rod again because, like I said, I actually really do like this ferro rod, its size, how it works. I find it a really innovative ferro rod, and it just really is an out-of-the-box kind of uh, thinking on it, and it's very well executed. So anyways, that is my ferro rod, and that is really a joy to use. Once again, some of these tools may seem a little bit silly, that's like, you find joy, you know, out of using this little ferro rod or this, you know, multi-tool, but they really are fun. And honestly, I do really like them, especially when I'm forced to use other ferro rods that are not as high quality as this one. I'm like, dang, I really wish I had this Exotac. Now onto one of my favorite cooking setups, and I'm really not sure why this pot in particular doesn't get that much love or why more people don't carry it, because honestly, I've carried this now for four years, the MSR Siegel, and I've loved this thing. So this is, as I kind of mentioned, this is either, it goes by the name of the MSR Siegel or MSR Stowaway. Either way, I really do like this setup. This is the smaller one, if I remember correctly, hopefully my memory is working, it's the 675 milliliter version. Not exactly sure on that, but it's the smaller version of the Stowaway. And I really enjoy this pot. I found it to be really great. I like how it has its enclosed handle, like everything is so you know, enclosed here, you have your pot handle, you don't have to go make one. It has a nice lid on it. You know, everything is just works really well. And of course, I have some Ritz crackers and Starbucks Via in there as always. That's kind of what I generally carry in there, just to kind of fill up space so that there's just not like useless space right there. Um, but I really like this setup. I mean, I'd probably say the only thing I kind of dislike is this rattle you can kind of hear here. Um, but overall, I really like how slick the setup is. And the reason why I carry a smaller one for anyone wondering, I do see a lot of bushcrafters that carry like really large, like 12 to 14 inch skillets, or even like the larger 
versions of not this one but just pots in general and my whole reason why I carry small pots is generally as I think you guys know I'm a soloist out here I don't generally go with anyone so for me to have a gigantic skillet or pot is really useless because I'm not making up meals for multiple people and even still you can make a meal for two people with this it might take a little bit longer but for me what I do like about this compact size is like I said for the most part I'm by myself and you know, this takes a lot less time to heat up than a larger or double the size. So I really do like this uh, little pot. And like I said, I kind of don't know why this MSR Siegel doesn't get more love. I think they're really great uh, little stainless steel pots for overall cooking. But I would definitely recommend checking them out. And I really do love this. And lastly is the Silky Saw Big Boy. Now this is the newest piece of kit to this, uh, newest addition to this whole bushcrafting kit or everything you've seen here. This is the newest by far, but so far I have not used it a gigantic amount, but what I have used of it, I really enjoy it. And really this is another one that I find myself wanting to get out into the woods just so I can use this saw. And really this folding saw has really kind of changed my mindset on saws because with my previous uh, bucking saw, the problem with it was that, you know, to pull it out, you had like three separate pieces and you had to assemble it slash disassemble it. That took a lot of time. And overall, there were times that I wouldn't even pull that saw out just because I was like, you know, this is going to take way too much time just to get it ready, not even to use it. But what I really like about this saw is, you know, all you have to do is just that and it's out, you know, it's done. And that is a huge convenience. I mean, this is even faster to deploy than my axe. So I really love that about it. This is surprisingly a quick little saw as well. It really eats up wood very fast. And I'm really loving it. It is definitely a joy to use, for me at least. So that this definitely makes it onto my, I think this is top seven favorite gear list. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this favorite gear uh, for bushcraft. Um, I really, this is some of the gear, this is a lot of the gear that, like I said, really makes bushcraft, at least for me, you know, just that extra level of fun. Like, I personally do enjoy bushcraft, regardless to what tools I'm using, and regardless to, you know, if I don't have some of this stuff. But whenever I can, I love taking some of, or all of this type of gear, and all this gear in particular, and once again, these are pieces that I find myself really enjoying every time I pull out and use, you know, this Silky or this Exotac Nano Striker or this GBA or the Seagull, you know, or the BRK or even the uh, Bow. They're all really fun and I really enjoy using them for what they are. Uh, you know, like I said, not all of this gear is the most practical. Some of it is more practical than others, but, you know, like the bow is not an extremely practical thing, and you, that's why you don't see me, you know, pulling it out every single adventure I go on. But when I can and when I really want to use it, uh, I love taking it out with me. It's very fun to use. And uh, another thing I love about the bow is, you know, just like walk through the woods and, you know, just bust stumps with it. It's really fun. You know, it's a good way to just kind of relax and, you know, get some practice in with your bow. So, anyways, that is my favorite gear, uh, as you guys can see. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and tell me what your favorite gear is. I'd really love to know what you guys enjoy to use and what, you know, makes you want to get out into bushcraft more and what you find yourself using quite a bit and bringing a lot of joy to you. Anyways, guys, that's it for now, and I'm out.